I was 11 years old in 1952, and it was when I first became aware that there was a place called Helsinki, and probably countless others did too, because that was the year that Finland, tucked away in the northeast corner of Europe, played host to the 1952 Olympic Games. It was the games of Emil Zetepec, who won gold medals in the 5,000 meters, the 10,000 meters, and the marathon. It was the games in which Ingemar Johansson and Floyd Patterson, both later to become heavyweight champions of the world, fought as amateurs in the boxing ring. But what of rallying in those days? Well, Sidney Allard won the 1952 Monte Carlo rally in an Allard, the only man ever to do so in a car bearing his own name. And Ian Appleyard won the second of his three gold cups on the Coup des Alpes in his XK120. But the Finns in those days were nowhere in rallying. In fact, it was another 10 years before the likes of Rauno Altonen and Timo Mäkinen made their mark on the international rallying scene. Before we look at the 1981 Thousand Lakes, let's analyse why Finns are so fast as rally drivers. Although the traffic in Helsinki is as hectic as any other modern city, once away from the capital, traffic is light roads uncrowded and the pace fairly relaxed. At least three quarters of the roads in central Finland are unsealed and even the main roads connecting small towns are made of compacted dirt lying on a bed of solid granite. During the Ice Age most of Finland's topsoil was pushed south into Poland. As the Poles haven't yet got round to handing it back, Finland remains rather short of soil and subsoil. Without this, of course, the road builders were compelled to work without filling material for all the hollows and dips, and therefore had to follow the natural run of the ground, unintentionally creating the infamous yumps that the rally drivers now have to contend with. There is no magical ingredient that makes the Finns better rally drivers. They're used to driving over dirt roads every day of the week, winter or summer, whatever the conditions. That and an overriding desire, always to be a winner, makes the Finns formidable opponents, particularly on their home ground. The enthusiasm for rallying in Finland has to be seen to be really appreciated. With an estimated half a million people out of a population of only five million turning out to watch the Thousand Lakes Rally, it's probably the only country that can count rallying as its national sport. Uvaskula, a pleasant town in central Finland, with a population of almost 65,000, plays host every August to the World Championship Thousand Lakes Rally. Headquarters for the event is the Rantasipi Hotel, and it is here that scrutineering and documentation for the rally takes place before the five o'clock start on Friday afternoon. The visiting teams base themselves with their respective local dealers, who are all avid rally enthusiasts, and who realize the publicity potential the rally brings to the area. And 
Andy Dawson of Team Datsun Europe provides some of the latest technology to the bonnet of St. Olin's car. Come on, okay, hello. Try that. Yeah, it's not, it just gets my air out. Anders Kulang, you're now lead driver for the new Mitsubishi team. When we last spoke, you were with Opel and Publimo. Can you tell us what happened to Publimo? Uh, I don't know really what's happened with Publimo. I was driving Opel and uh, Publimo was there for help us. And uh, in the middle of the year, that was something some... I don't know what's happened really. So I stopped and uh, beginning with a new Mitsubishi car. The well, first event was Greece for us. Well, yeah. Yes, how did that go? Okay, we shall not talk so much about Greece, where we have uh, punctures and so we must stop. And now it's the uh, second event and um, I'm more happy with the car in the moment. I mean, that is second event for me with Mitsubishi and uh, the car is more compatible today. Have you done a lot of testing with it? We have done a lot of tests, yes. and. Uh, I mean, we never know what's happened and uh, here in Finland it's so hard and so many good Finn drivers, Swedish drivers and yes, a lot of good drivers and good cars, so it's, uh, I'm happy if we can be one of the ten. Do you think, have you done it here in, in Finland, the testing, or in Austria? In, in, uh, here in Finland, before the rally, yes. And it's going to be strong enough for all these jumps, is it? Yes, but I mean, uh, we have been here a lot of years and uh, we know the jumps and uh, at the same time it's very difficult to practice in. It's uh, only low to go 30, 50 and 80 mm. and uh, the rally speed can be 190 over some jumps. What about the other drivers in the team? Who else have you got? Uh, I think we are a quite good team. I think Bruno can explain it more than I. Bruno, yeah, the rest of the team. Well, I think the, the best driver, if he can uh, take point out one of the Finnish drivers, will be Hamelayen. He won the rally 77 and he's driving completely without pace notes. His co driver arrived today. This, this is his first time in the event. And uh, he's, he's relying totally on memory. Yes, on memory. And that's fantastic. And he's a re re reliable driver. He will, he will not do a mistake and he's very fast. And then, of course, Line is also fast, but then he's using pace notes. So maybe that's the difference. <laughs> And who's going to win, Bruno? Uh, it's very difficult to say. Marco will uh, fight for a win and Hanno also. But then we have three more Finns who are very quick. And uh, it's impossible to say. It will be a big fight, a big battle. On the opening four kilometer stage, Marco Alain set second fastest time in his field, with Vatanen two seconds slower in the Rothmans escort. Mikola in the Audi Quattro demoralizes the opposition by recording a time five seconds quicker than Alain and an incredible 15 seconds quicker than 10th fastest driver Pentio Riccolo. By special stage three, Uria, Mikola has opened out a slender lead over Alain and Vatanen. This horrifying yump is the only one in the road book to be cautioned and has been likened to driving down a cliff face. And off here is usually terminal and most drivers treated with respect. Oh, I didn't
Arriving by boat to a special stage would be a novelty anywhere else, but not in Finland. With the heavy rain making conditions treacherous, Mikola is using the four-wheel drive quattro to good effect, and by stage five has extended his lead slightly. Despite a spin, however, a determined Marku Elaine still equals Mikola's time on the 24-kilometer stage. There is a hard night ahead of the competitors with another 15 stages to complete before a welcome rest halt back at Yavaskala. Special stage 20, Rui Mackey, the last stage before Yavaskala. Mikula is still in the lead, although has had to contend with a worsening misfire. Vatanen has moved into second place after Elaine lost time during the night with a roll on stage 10. flat out in fifth gear at an average of over 130 kilometers an hour. Toivonen's co-driver Fred Gallagher said he thought it best to wear his crash helmet back to front. He didn't really want to see how fast he was going. After the rest halt, the weather miraculously cleared and it was to remain warm and dry for the rest of the event. The opening stage of the second leg was a mixed tarmac loose surface test in the middle of Uvascular itself, guaranteed to entertain the huge crowds and bring the Saturday shopping to a halt. Only second separated the top groups, and indeed Mikula, Vatanen, Alain, Toivonen and Eklund all shared second fastest time, being surprisingly beaten by one second by Anders Kulan in the Turbo Lancer.
Nikola, however, was still having problems with his turbo. The misfire that had plagued him on the last few stages of the first leg had worsened. Audi mechanics decided a camshaft change was necessary, and it was a worried Nikola who watched the minutes tick away, and with them his lead, as he incurred road penalties and dropped to fifth. Vatanen was the new rally leader. <laughs> Vatanen and Elaine were swapping seconds at the head of the field and having an intense personal battle. The other leading contenders were fighting just to stay in touch, although the gap was already widening with only Mikola making ground with some determined driving to improve on his fifth place. had a serious problem when a bypass pipe on the turbocharger of his Lancer broke, causing drastic overheating, which cooked his oil. The subsequent repair meant road penalties, which dropped him well down the field. Towards the end of the rally, teammate Hamalainen was to suffer a similar problem. Running late due to his cam sharp problem was putting up some impressive times in his fight bag and took seven seconds off Vatanen on this day. over a flat-out crest on stage 31, competitors head back towards Uvascular and another short rest halt.
Crowd control in Finland is very strict, with the marshals having considerable influence over who stands where, due to the sobering effect of their canine friends. Some of the spectators, of course, could use some form of sobering influence. Stage 32, Rui Mackey, again the last stage before the Uvascular rest halt. Vatanen is still going strong and maintaining his lead over Alain, with Toivonen putting in a late challenge. Mikula has passed Salonen and is up to fourth. The final morning of the 1981 Thousand Lakes Rally, and only four stages still to go. Vatanen and Elaine had continued their tremendous pace, each crew driving at 11 tenths with no margin for error. Dave Richards, Vatanen's co-driver, confirmed they were two seconds a mile quicker in the wet this year than they had been over the same stages in 1980. On one stage, they had been an incredible 22 seconds quicker. Retirements during the night included Per Eklund on stage 36 with engine problems in his Porsche 911 and Henry Teuvenen on stage 38 with a distributor fault on his sunbeam. A disappointing end after such a spirited drive. The infamous Uriya Yump again, two stages from the finish, and no one is taking any chances. Mikula has moved into third place after Toivonen's retirement, and barring Vatanen or Alain having a problem, knows he cannot improve on that position.
The rally is drawing to its conclusion, an event that will long be remembered for the titanic struggle between Vatanen and Elaine, of Mikola's fight back in the Quattro, of Salonen's splendid effort in bringing his Group 2 Datsun Violet into fourth place, and of the reliability of the Colt Turbo Lancers in finishing 10th, 11th and 12th on only their second major rally. The Thousand Lakes Rally is a unique event. It is incredibly fast, using roads which are like nothing to be found anywhere else in the world. The organization is excellent, with officials, marshals, hoteliers and general public making foreign crews and visitors welcome to Finland. To compete on the rally is an adventure, to finish an achievement, but to win puts you amongst rallying's elite.
Valley fan King Gustav of Sweden along with FISA president Valestra were there to flag off the 172 entries. Michel Mouton, winner of the Portuguese, Greek and Brazilian rounds, was, despite the absence of cheap rival Walter Rowe, not excited about her chances. It's so quick, so special, you know. This, uh, it's very good, I think, for future. But uh, coming straight from Brazil, we have no time to practice and uh, we have only seven days. And uh, also my note from last year was completely wrong because I think now I am more confident, so more quicker. And, um, Okay, we have a lot of work to do, 36 stage new, and uh, I think it's not enough, you know, to be really ready, but in every case, uh, I think we, we will try to do something. Yes. Your experience, who do you think is going to win this year's Thousand Lakes Rally? I hope Anu Mikola. Really, I hope. It be nice to win this, but uh, I'm sure it will be four or five other drivers who is aiming the same result. What's gone wrong this year? Well, it has been my fault in many cases, and uh, in some, um, car has just fallen into pieces. So, uh, in the World Championship scene, it has been very, very bad season for me, only one result. Uh, luckily, I have done some rallying in Britain, so that has uh, been much better. Yeah. Behind Hanu came Marco Allen in the new version of the Lancia Rally. No one was giving it much of a chance of holding together. Henry Toivonen is a local lad, and a Humalamaki switchback is only a few miles from home. Second Quattro man and Swedish winner Stig Gomquist. Next, reputedly the highest paid driver in rally, Timo Salomon in the Datsun Turbo. He's done the route 26 times in practice. The Mitsubishi Lancers return to Frey for the first time since last year's RAC. This is a regular. Michel starts with a can-can performance. Per Eklund, in the absence of a paid drive, had his trusty old Porsche, but got no further than the end of the stage as his rear suspension broke under the strain of this treatment. Anders Kulang, having his first drive for nine months, dances the Colt Turbo in celebration. Frenchman Anna Coppier leads the Visa Brigade. Mikula and Blomquist arrive at stage five, the longest on the first leg. Equal on time, but Stieg pulls ahead by six seconds, and his rear discs bear witness to his efforts. Alan, after one fastest time, is let down by the Lancia, which expires a few yards further on with no compression. The rain is bucketing down as Teuben and grimly fights to stay in touch and lead the two-wheel drive cars. I would have thought that um, Marco will disappear to start with, but uh, how good and well, how reliable New Lancia is, that nobody knows. And of course, Audi Quattro, Quattro is known quantity, so so I'm sure they will be after Lancia and then this so-called normal cars. Next morning, with the exception of Marco Allen, they're all still there. But incredibly, before the lunch stop is reached, the top ten will be decimated by six major retirements, and the competition will be all but over before half distance. Mikola now leads, but it's Toivonen who is second, just 14 seconds adrift. Another 14 seconds back comes Blomquist, and he has half a minute in hand over world champion Ari Vatanen in the MCD Escort. Johansson is fifth, but not for long. A lightning return to the route, but not quick enough to prevent him being overhauled by new fifth place man Penty Auricula. Salonen, who 
is just three seconds behind. Michel is in there too, just another four seconds down, but three minutes quicker than the next non-Scandinavian. Lassie Lampy, quickest of the hordes of rapid second division fits. Within three stages, he will be spectating. Antero Liner drove one of the Lancers last year, but this time it's his Talbot that has to take the punishment. Each European country has its wild man of the woods who does amazing things with Dawson prepared Datsuns. In Portugal, it's Mendes. In Greece, Moussas. In Belgium, Dumont. In Sweden, Søren Nielsen, and here in Finland, it's Erki Pitkinen. Anders Kulang is still there at 10, sharing the same minute with the previous three cars. That's how close it is. Next, Kiosti Hammerleinen, who won the event in 77, co-driven by one of our cameramen. Russell Brooks has come over from the UK to take part in his first overseas world championship and co-driven by Ronan Morgan. They've practiced hard and lie 12th overall. Stage 12 is over and Stieg has recovered 13 seconds from Teuvener. The next stage should see him back to second place. Number one job in the Opel camp is to hang back the underpinnings onto Nally Johansson's car after that diversion. Mahin Pub, at 25 kilometers, the longest of the rally, and there's more trouble here. Blomquist has got past Teuvenen and Mikkeler and leads the event by two seconds. Vatanen retires with engine trouble. Johansson has trouble in store too. Penty is still going well, though still hounded by Salonen. loses it on the next yump and rolls out of contention. Liner therefore moves up to 6th, Pitkin at 7th, Hammerline and 8th, and Brooks is now 11th. the fastest roller coaster in the world. Eight kilometers at an average of over 120 kilometers per hour. Mikola gets back in the lead because Blomquist has damaged his front suspension on a rock. And it's Teuvenen who arrives first, but limping. They've been off and hit a roadside hut head on. Judging by the way Stieg is still jumping, you would never believe he had damaged suspension, but that offside front wheel is splayed. Toivelin's car is patched up, but after one more stage where he is quickest, the head gasket flows. Johansson too bows out with a blown engine. All of which means that Auricula is now third, though Kulang in the sister cult has retired with engine trouble during this hectic morning. The prize for the biggest jumper must go to Salonen. Imagine the spectacle if they were to take these crests flat out.
Quintero Liner moves up to sixth, two seconds clear of Pitkinen. Brooks is now a top ten runner against all these flying fins on their home ground. Brilliant. With Toivonen out, the Audi team instruct Mikola and Blomquist to hold station, despite the fact that Blomquist had been in the lead at least twice. So with 27 out of 47 stages still to come, the interest has been taken out of the event. holds a comfortable third place, four minutes down with Salonen some 20 seconds behind him. Liner is now fifth. Pitkin at sixth. Thirsty seventh. Peter Geidel lies 11th in his Datsun. Henry's brother Harry Toivonen 10th, one spot behind Brooks who is up to 9th. Three stages on. And with the Quattros now just driving to the end, Penty does four consecutive fastest times in his efforts to get clear of Salonen. Second night, Pitkinen, Thirsty, and Hammerlein and all retire, leaving Russell Brooks in sixth place, the best performance ever by a non-Scandinavian on this event. A magnificent achievement on a slender budget. escorts are not seen in the top 20 of a national event but here in Finland on a world championship round two finished in the top 10. 26 driven by Harry Utila finished seventh. And from a seeding of 109 Henry Palmbrus finished an amazing 10th overall.
Mikula and Hertz arrived back in Yubaskila to a warm welcome and a little consolation for so many misfortunes this year. Hanu Jr. was there to be the first to congratulate Dad. Another flying fin in the making? Very well, and um, I'm very amazed because this car is almost the standard, and uh, it was still working very well. You're surprised at your result. Is that because the car has gone so well, or because of the high rate of attrition amongst the leading crews? No, I think the car was very quick, so I expected it to be about third. And um, but it, we had so few problems with the car, so that's what surprised me. Is there much more development left yet in this car? Is it going to be so much better for the RAC rally, for instance? Of course, there is a lot of uh, development it can do because this is only first rally this year, and uh, there's a lot of things which can make it much quicker. The Isle of Man, a unique motorsports venue. The bike racers have gone home and it's time for the island to host the annual invasion of rally enthusiasts from all over the UK and Ireland. The event is the final round of the British Open Championship and championship leader Stig Blomqvist sets off from Douglas on the first of three days to face appalling weather conditions. Up on the slopes of Snaefell the rain lashes down, reducing both visibility and vital grip. Finland's Henry Toivonen in the Opel Manta was into an early lead and he kept it on stage two despite this overshoot and a couple of spins. Not so lucky was Germany's Manfred Hero. Brakes have a habit of losing their efficiency after a trip through a swollen Ford. By the end of the first rain lash day, the order was Toivonen, one and a half minutes ahead of teammate and fellow Finn, Harry Vattenen, with British champion Jimmy McRae in third. Behind McRae comes Russell Brooks in his Chevette, the only man with a mathematical chance of beating Blomqvist for the championship title. 
Ulsterman and crowd favourite Bertie Fisher has his privately run Manta up into fifth, just eight seconds ahead of Terry Cave's Chevette. Way down in seventh was Dick Blomquist's Audi Quattro, driving to make sure of a finish in the top ten, which is all he needs to do to be certain of the championship. The less powerful Group A cars are headed by Toyota's Pear Eklund, who has his 1600cc Corolla half a minute up on Chris Lord's Mazda RX-7. Next morning, and the three Opal set off for another three circuits of the island. But Jimmy McRae's just fitted a new rear axle, and within a mile it fails. What's happened, Jim? I've lost drive in the new axle. Brand new. Brand new. So, that's it. Finished. On the same stage, Robin Lands from Castle Derg in Northern Ireland has got himself up from a start position of 95 to a brilliant 8th before disaster strikes. He carries on with undiminished enthusiasm. Bertie Fisher is now third, but we will tire himself before the day is out. Up to fourth has come Stig Blomquist, and Chris Lord will end the day with just nine seconds lead over Sweden's Per Eklund, delayed last night with ignition problems. Rally leader Henry Teuvelin contemplates the possibility of his first major win for nearly three years. Because we haven't had any problems at all, but uh, anyway we changed the rear axle yesterday for security thing, and uh, just hope now today that it will be okay. Russell Brooks has got to win the event outright to have any chance of taking the title and is trying everything he knows to get on terms with the Mantis. Half his wishes are answered when the Quattro, seen here on the new Round the Houses stage in Ramsey, hits engine trouble and Blomquist retires. Russell still has to win though and Teuven and Vatten can hold him off if their cars stay together. Ari savers his teammates change of fortune. He just hasn't got any wins, although he has put up some really remarkable performances. Right. So yeah. I think it is his time to win something. Be very nice. I'm sure you'll be very pleased to see him win. Oh yes, I don't mind at all. So Brooks has to make do with third, and despite a top place finish on every round, loses the championship by just three points. A sorry reward for a brilliantly consistent season. In fourth place came a spectacular Terry Cabey, well ahead of the best manxman, Ian Corkill, in his noisy Porsche. Robin Lyons recovered well from his accident to finish a fine six, whilst Per Eklund overhauls Lord to take Group A, and with the help of John Midgley's similar car, the manufacturer's title for Toyota. But the real applause is reserved for Henry Teuvenin, partnered by Fred Gallagher, who takes his first major win since the Lombard RAC rally back in 1980.